Warning. The story you are about to read and or listen to has a series of potentially triggering and controversial topics, as well as events taking place. I will list them now. Child abuse, substance abuse, implied sexual abuse, bullying, self-harm, suicidal thoughts and tendencies, and potentially more as the story progresses. If you may feel uncomfortable by these things, no one will judge you if you click off of this video. If you accept the risk and want to experience the story for what it is, then I invite you to enjoy this chapter of white mailing. Thank you. Final disclaimer. I do not make light of these topics, nor do I find them to be tools for shock value. I do consider them very real events that happen daily. Therefore, they should not be barred from being in a story to give it a more real feeling. I do not hope to make light of these things, only to draw attention to them. Please enjoy the show. Chapter 7 June watched with an awkward stare as Kyler angrily and rapidly shoveled food into his mouth. She couldn't believe how quickly he was wolfing it down. The anger never even left his face. The irritation of his apparent arch-rival's arrival in his class completely sent him over the edge, even while eating. Noelle and Ben tried their best to look away. They, too, felt incredibly off-put by Kyler's behavior. Kyler devoured his milk quickly, slamming it onto the table. He then picked up his spoon and shoveled three spoons of mashed potatoes into his mouth in quick succession. He picked up the milk again, but realized it was empty. He put it down, grabbed the water bottle across the table from him. June went wide-eyed. Hey! She protested. That's mine! Kyler only growled in reply. June sighed. This is not a mature way to handle this, you know. Handle what? There's nothing to handle. I'm perfectly fine. She's very hungry and thirsty. When I finish this bottle, can I stab it with a pen? June reached across the table and grabbed her bottle back. You're not the only person in the world. You have to share it with people you don't like. I know. I've gotten used to that with you. So then what's the problem? Is he that much worse? Yes, Kyler said simply. You know him less than me. Haven't I annoyed you more over the years? Quality over quantity, Juniper. What do you mean? Kyler rolled his eyes. Annoying as you may be, you're at least trying to make an effort to help. He's being a jerk to be a jerk. Massive difference. June leaned over her palm. You never know. Maybe he was just having a bad day. No, he'll be having a bad day if he tries to pull that crap on me again. Would you stop? June groaned. You're not threatening. Agree to disagree, Ben muttered. Suddenly, June felt a presence next to her. She didn't even need to turn to know who it was, considering Kyler was staring a hole through them. She sighed. He smiled at her. Hello, June. Nice to see you again. He glanced over at Noelle and grinned. I always love sitting near beautiful girls. Noelle blushed with a smile, but June shook her head. Listen, he began, hesitating. June turned to face him, and his face spelled shame. How I came off when we last spoke, I'm really unhappy with it. I came off as really rude to you, and I gave my Hannah hell a talking to, and she'll leave your bro little brother alone. Truce? June thought for a moment, then smiled. He put his hand out, and she shook it. Hear that, Kyler? He's being mature about it. Eric nodded, looking at Kyler. Speaking of which, I wanted to say sorry to you as well. I didn't mean to come off so harshly. Kyler looked at him, then a sigh, but sighed. Yeah, all right, he said finally. First impressions don't mean everything. Eric laughed. True. <laughs> I'm glad you understand. I thought for sure your inbred white trash brain would never comprehend that. June covered her face with her hands. So close, she thought. Ben turned away, sipping his milk, and Noelle raised a book to cover her face. Kyler smiled, his eyes closed. He rose to his feet and looked at Eric sternly. Stand up, Eric blinked. What for? Is there a problem? Oh, you're about to have one, boy. Eric shrugged, shaking his head. What's your deal? Kyler chuckled. My deal? You insult me and you think there aren't any repercussions? I didn't insult you. I stated facts. I'm going to put you in a coma. Stand up now. June rose to her feet. Hey, let's chill out, all right? You know the rules, Kyler. No, no, this is an exception, Kyler stated, turning to June. No one can just insult me like that and get away with it. 
It's a part of life. People say stuff like that about me all the time. Oh, shut up. Like what? Your eyeliner isn't as sharp today? Eric laughed. I didn't know June had such a tight hold on your leash. All you can do is run to the end of it and bark. I don't wear a collar, so there's nothing to attach a leash to. I'm going to say it again. Stand up. June put her hand on Eric's chest when he began to move and put a f finger to Kyler's face. Enough, both of you. She turned to Kyler. You know better. Cool off. Kyler stared through June's eyes at the, as if they were transparent. You know what? I'm sick of you standing up for this piece of trash just because he's pretty. Didn't realize you were so damn shallow. June's eyebrows raised. You want to run by that by me again? You heard me. Every time someone messes with me, I get in trouble. This is bull. I don't care what he looks like, idiot. How dare you even suggest that? You know better because we've been over this. You need to learn how to solve issues in a mature manner. Eric shook his head. This is just embarrassing to watch. You're not helping, June said. Screw this. Kyler said, grabbing his tray. He went to go dump his food and then walked off. Kyler, June called. Would you just come back here? Listen! Eric shrugged. He's dragging you down, you know. You'd be a lot happier if you didn't have that dead weight. June turned to him and scowled. He's my friend. He isn't dead weight. You guys don't act like friends. June hesitated. We're different, okay? Noel sighed and tapped Ben's shoulder. Eric, we need to talk to June. Do you mind? Eric rose to his feet. Say no more. Eric walked off with his tray. Noel tapped the table. Sit. June didn't often hear Noel be so blunt with her. She did as she asked. What is it? You need to apologize to Kyler. This is the second time you've done this from what you told us. The first time that guy was antagonizing you. This time he was antagonizing Kyler directly. He's egging him on. Kyler's a hothead. That's just his personality. Ben nodded. I've known Kyler for years. If you try to intentionally push his button, he loses his head. It doesn't take much. No amount of training or whatever you're doing is going to change that. June sighed. You guys, people are going to insult you. It's just how it goes. It's a part of life. It's going to happen. He needs to learn how to deal with that without fighting people every time. You're right, Noel admitted but it's hard to digest when your friends take the side of the other person when they are doing the antagonizing. June blinked. What are you talking about? I'm not taking Eric's side. Yes, you are. That's twice that guy was totally out of line and Kyler stood up for you or himself. That's twice you blamed Kyler. Come on, June. I get you're trying to teach him, but be realistic. Would you want Kyler to have your back if someone insulted you? June sunk in her seat. Yeah... There you go. I know what you're trying to do, and what you're doing is great, but you gotta accept that Kyler isn't ever going to be perfect. June sighed. Noelle was right, and June knew it. She'd messed up so many times in the last month and a half. It was between the middle and end of September, and she felt like she wasn't doing anything right anymore. She was just trying so hard to help Kyler adjust that she didn't see half the mistakes she was making. She glanced over at Ben, who shrugged at her. She pursed her lips. Okay, she said with a deep sigh. You're right. I know, she said matter-of-factly. Once lunch ended, they were all back in their classroom. Miss Higgins was giving a lecture, and most of the students were taking notes, except for one, June. She was still distracted by the earlier events. She glanced to her left to see Eric, who looked up and smiled at her innocently. She then looked down and sighed. She picked up her pencil and prodded Kyler with the eraser end. He looked up from his notes and looked to his left at her. Hey, she whispered softly. Sorry. Kyler's eyes widened slightly, obviously taken aback from the comment. Four, he responded. Not having your back when you had mine. Kyler shrugged. No big deal, he said, and then looked away. June sighed, but then the corners of Kyler's mouth curve upward. A smile, she thought. She couldn't help but do the same. June stared out the car window at Kyler's house. It was finally time to meet his family. 
She was incredibly nervous and unsure that this is what she wanted, but she knew Kyler's family would only hound him until she showed her face. Julie looked to her right to see June's hesitation. Want to turn back? June shook her head instantly. No, no. I said I'd be here. Don't want to leave him hanging. Julie nodded. Well, give me a call when you're ready to be picked up. If I don't pick up, I'm probably in the shower. Just call a few minutes later. Okay, Mom, June said with a smile. Love you. Love you, too. Have fun. I'll try, June said, opening the car door. She stepped onto the grass and closed it. Julie turned the car around and drove off. All right, well, she said with a sigh. Here goes nothing. She felt like she was on death row. This was going to be incredibly awkward for her, but she had to be there for Kyler. It was Friday night, and Kyler had behaved all week. His days were diminishing, and June felt as though he was finally starting to really get it. She reached the door and checked her phone. 7.13 p.m. She was a little late, so she hoped that they wouldn't be too upset. She rang the doorbell and looked around the yard patiently. She noticed the bushes to the right of the house she hid in. The memories of that day almost came racing back, but the door opened pretty quickly. Kyler stood there in casual clothes, his sleeves rolled up, his face blank. His long hair hung over his shoulders. Thought you dipped out, he said bluntly. You need to have more faith in me, then. Whatever, he muttered. Come on in. What are we having? She asked, walking inside. Don't know. Ask Kaylee. She followed Kyler into the dining room where Kyler's father was setting the table. She instantly shivered, remembering what happened. He looked up at her and grinned. So, you're real. I was beginning to wonder. He walked over to her and held out his hand. Hi, I'm Troy. She tried her best not to hesitate and shook his hand. I'm June. It's nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me over for dinner. He displayed a confused expression, waving her off. You kidding? Any chance to see one of Kyler's friends is one I'm going to take, since we don't get to see him very often. Have a seat wherever you like. June nodded and sat across from Kyler, while Troy sat at the head of the table. Kaylee came into the room with two big plates, setting one down where she would sit and one down where Troy would sit. They had a large piece of fish, mashed potatoes with dark gravy, corn, and a few sticks of celery. It looked scrumptious. Hi, we meet again, she chuckled. Nice to officially meet you. Did you want the full plate as well? Anything you don't like? Oh, June said with a smile. I'm not picky since you guys are being so gracious. I'll take whatever's offered. Goodness, don't be so polite, honey. You're more than welcome. Kaylee walked back into the kitchen. June was surprised to see them being so polite. Everyone was dressed so nicely. The only one who wasn't smiling her face off was Kyler and she just figured that was how he always looked. It was like the family did a complete 180. Kaylee came back into the dining room a few minutes later with two plates. She sat one down in front of June lightly. It's hot, so be careful. June nodded and closed her hands to pray. She heard a slight bang and opened to see Kyler's plate still spinning a bit. Kaylee just dropped it in front of him. And so it begins, she thought. Um... June said with a slight hesitation. Would you mind if I prayed first? Troy shrugged and dug into his food. She looked over at him, slightly offended. Kyler sighed. He bowed his head and closed his hands. June smiled at him. What are you doing? Troy asked him, his mouth still slightly full. Since when are you religious? Kyler looked up and motioned his hand to June shyly. I'm just trying to be polite is all. Don't you think it's kind of rude to pretend to be religious, though? June shifted uncomfortably. This is what it's like to be inside of it. Actually, I think it's sweet. I appreciate the gesture. Troy raised his hands defensively, surrendering the situation. She said a quick prayer and they dug into her food. Troy swallowed a sip of his wine and looked at Kaylee. That was school, sweetheart. Kaylee nodded. Pretty good. She said, we have a test Friday, so I was tutoring some kids. They seemed to understand most of it except a few things, so I didn't have to work too hard. That's good. Proud of you. Yeah, she said with a smile. Best part is, I kind of already know everything that'll be on the test, so I don't even need to study. Well, I'll take your word for it, but if you don't get a good grade, I'm going to be asking some questions. You got me? Yes, Dad, she said with a mocking groan. He dug back into his food and then turned to June. So how do you know Kyler? 
June took a moment to swallow her food. Well, we met quite a few years ago, but recently became close. I was class president when we first met, so we knew each other a lot back then, just not as well as we do now. Is it because it causes a lot of trouble? June looked at Kyler, whose expression showed familiarity and sadness. He was obviously used to this verbal knocking. Admittedly, he was a case, but I think he's made quite the turnaround. When he wants to be, he can be a really nice guy. Troy's eyed and white, wide along with pursed lips. Almost like we're talking about a completely different kid. He didn't pay you to say this, did he? June shook her head innocently. No, I really do think he's come a long way. Kyler seemed too like he wanted to hide his face. Mixed with the spotlight of being insulted and complimented, he, she was pretty sure he just wanted to go hide. Troy continued eating, but June blinked curiously. Aren't we going to find out about Kyler's day? Troy looked up, obviously confused. What part of it? What'd he do? He looked at Kyler, irritated. What'd you do this time, huh? Kyler shrugged. Nothing. Then why'd she ask, huh? June cleared her throat awkwardly, sipping her water. It's just that, um, you asked Kaylee about her day at school, but not Kyler. Troy laughed. Why would I do that? June's throat grew hot. Because he's your son. I thought you might be concerned about his day at school. Oh, yeah? Okay. Troy turned to Kyler, light shining onto his bald spot. How was school, huh? Kyler took a bite of mashed potatoes, obviously supremely uncomfortable. Fine. Troy pointed at Kyler as if he proved a great point. That right there, that's why I don't ask. He constantly gets into fight, never does his work, makes life for teachers there a living hell. Why would I want that kind of stress in my life knowing what he's doing when I can just accept ignorance? June shook her head. At least he's not on the streets, you know? He's not smoking or drinking or addicted to drugs. Some kids can't say those things. I don't think any kid should get a medal for being clean from that kind of stuff. They should be clean, June shrugged. There are plenty of kids there that sneak alcohol into the school bathrooms and get drunk during class. Kyler has never done that. Good, Troy said with a laugh. He shouldn't be doing that anyway. I'm not going to congratulate him over something so minor. As far as I'm concerned, kids are expected to not be alcoholics. Kyler snorted. If only adults were the same, he muttered. Kaylee dropped her fork, obviously shocked by what Kyler said. As if that were the word that would have triggered an explosion. Troy slowly turned to Kyler and leaned closer. What did you just say? He said in a low, sinister voice. Kyler looked up, then down, shaking his head. Nothing. I, I didn't say anything. June looked at Kyler, absolutely dying inside because of her lack of ability to help him. She was desperate to find the words, jump in and make the save, but nothing escaped her lips. Troy stared a hole through Kyler. After dinner, you and I are going to talk. Kyler nodded. Obviously scared. He knew it was coming, and unbeknownst to the others. So did she. She couldn't take it anymore. Why? She asked. What are you going to do? Beat him again? It was the most silent a room had ever been in all her life. Kyler looked up. His eyes widened from the absolute shock, as if June had just shot him in the chest. Kaylee stared at June the same way. Troy slowly turned his head towards June, his neck reddened, sweat laying on his brow. What did you just say? He said with hesitation. June gulped, but decided she couldn't go back. You heard me. I know where those bruises come from. Troy chuckled nervously. He gets into fights all the time. That's a convenient cover for an abusive alcoholic father, isn't it? June was in the lion's den, one shred of hesitation no matter how scared she was, and they would gaslight her so badly that even she would believe it. Despite seeing it happen with her own eyes, she could not show mercy. How dare you, Kaylee shouted, suggesting such a thing of my father. Good acting skills, Kaylee, but you're just as bad. Wishing death upon your brother is just as bad as hitting him, so don't act innocent either. 
Kaylee's lip quivered as if the biggest spotlight in the world had just been flashed on her. June's face was strangely stoic and sure of everything. She looked at Kyler, who looked as, as if he'd been betrayed. June's expression faltered for half a moment, but she knew she couldn't hold back anymore either. I know what really goes on in this house. The yelling, the hitting, all of it. And no amount of plain dumb or innocent will ever convince me otherwise. So stop lying to yourselves that you're such good people who shit rainbows and do no wrong. Never in my life have I seen anyone as hateful and remorseless as you. They stared at her in silent disbelief. Oh, but don't worry, June said, standing up. I'm not going to tell anyone what goes on here. You can thank Kyler for that, his request. Thanks for dinner. She threw a napkin over her plate and walked out to the dining room. She opened the door and shut it behind her. She took a few steps into the driveway. Suddenly, all the adrenaline had hit her at once. She just took on and called out a child abuser to his face and took down as a defender as well. She'd never felt such a rush in all her life. Her heart rate was accelerated because of the situation. Holy shit, she said, leaning on her knees, gasping for air. She took a few moments to catch her breath, then pulled her phone out and began to dial her mom's number. You're insane, said a voice behind her. She knew who it was before she turned around. June, sh June sniffed sharply. I didn't mean to. It just kind of came out. You could have stopped yourself after the first thing you said, though. Train was rolling. Figured I might as well blow the whistle. She turned to face him and sighed deeply. She looked down at her shoes. That must have caused a lot of trouble for you, huh? Kyler blinked and then nodded. Yeah. June's expression saddened. I didn't think about that. I'm sorry. I should have just shut up. Kyler shrugged. Well, nothing we can do now. When I finally go back in, I'm really sure I'm going to hear from them. Will they forbid you to see me? Probably, but I'll do it anyway. June's eyes brightened. The small tears that formed in her eyes seemed to disappear. Do you want to go for a walk? Kyler shifted his feet. Huh? A walk? Yeah. It'll give you another reason to stay out of the house. Kyler snorted. Lead the way. They didn't know quite what to say as they walked. They wandered next to the one another quietly. The only sound would be the occasional sigh and the clicking of their shoes on the pavement. June walked with her hands behind her back, coiling as Kyler's hands were shoved in his pockets. The events of what had transpired echoes in June's mind as she walked next to her friend. She continuously asked herself what she'd done, how much trouble she'd caused. Another part of her didn't regret it. She felt what she said in its entirety. She'd never stood up to someone like that before, though, so she was still in a bit shaken up. June decided to take the turn into the clearing where she first spoke to Kyler seriously. They walked into the old gazebo and took a seat next to each other. Kyler took an exasperated sigh of exhaustion and threw his head back. I didn't even get to finish dinner. June giggled through her nerves. Still hungry? Yeah, don't worry about it though. I'll steal something from the fridge later. How often do you have to do that? Often enough for them to notice the food goes missing when they're not around in the kitchen. June nodded in understanding. She was starting to get used to hearing Kyler's pain. She realized he just didn't feel it as strongly as other people might. He was tough. There was no denying it. When was the last time you felt loved? Kyler looked at her strangely, obviously not expecting the question. When you say that, do you mean cared for or loved? Uh, June shrugged. Both, I guess? Kyler looked away. I feel cared for every day. June blinked. Really? By who? Kyler looked at her, almost offended. Wow, way to give me a vote of confidence. I know, what a concept. June sighed deeply. You know that's not what I meant. I just wanted to know who does that for you. Not important. Kyler said quickly. As for loved, Kyler trailed off and looked at the ground, tapping his foot. Not since my mom died, so about ten years. 
June slanted her lips, looking at the floor with him. You deserve better, she said softly, almost hypnotizingly. You deserve love. Everyone does, but especially you. Kylo blew air from his nostrils. <laughs> especially me, huh? Why? You've suffered enough, don't you think? Your heart is always in the right place. June shrugged. Even when I don't see it right away. Kyla rolled his eyes. You know, you're always right about everyone else. You know why you're not with me? June looked at him curiously. Why is that? Because you feel like you have to be. With others, they usually come to you and whine about some stupid problem, and you just want to help them out, so you tell them that that's the way to do it. With me, you've been trying to reprogram me from the ground up, when instead, you should have been as far away from me as possible. But, since you're not willing to go that far, you should at least ease up and give me some direction when I actually need it. June laughed lightly. Yeah, you got a point. Not luck you down eventually, though. Before this arrangement ends, I'll understand you better than you do. Kyler looked at her, obviously amused by her enthusiasm. <laughs> Bet. June smiled. The soft breeze was nice against her face. Being alone with Kyler didn't feel awkward anymore. She truly felt like he was her friend. She spent so much more time with him than any of her other friends in the past month, but she didn't even feel bad about it. Kyler, on the other hand, has yet to call her June. He was still formal with her, despite being at least tolerable around her. She didn't think he'd ever call her June, so she decide decided to stop waiting for it. Do you miss your mother? She asked softly. She didn't like asking about his mom, but maybe he'd look back with nostalgia. Kyler didn't even look at her. He just looked forward as if looking at something in the distance. Every day, he replied. She nodded, swinging her feet on the beach next to him. What kind of woman was she? Kyler sw smiled warmly. He didn't smile often, so June tried her best to make mental snapshots. The best kind. She was gentle, warm, and soft. She made sure that Every one of us was completely content at all times. Always had Dad's lunch ready before he even got up for breakfast. Always made sure to tie Kaylee's shoes until she proved she got it and then did it anyway for fun. She always hugged me and sing me to sleep every night. Kyler began chuckling softly. You know, she actually used to do this thing for me whenever I was sad or hurt or whatever. Every time I was upset, she'd hush me and let me lay on my head on her lap and stroke my hair out of my face, running her fingertails along my scalp and petting my face. God, best feeling in the world, Juniper. I can't even describe it to you. His smile faded. But that was a long time ago. She's gone. She can't do that for me anymore. June stared at him for a while. He finally opened up to her. She was so happy that she couldn't smile because of how pain much pain she'd imagined he'd suffered. How long this boy has gone without his loving mother was far too long. She didn't want to think about it anymore. June scooted a few feet away and dusted off her thighs. She spread her arms and looked at him. Okay. Come here. Kyler looked at her awkwardly, his eyes glancing between her and her legs. What? Lay down, silly. Come on, you know you want to. Kyler snorted and raised a hand at her. No thanks, I'm good. Kyler, I won't add any days if you do or you don't. But look at me in the eyes and tell me you don't miss it and wouldn't want it back for just a few moments. Kyler looked at her again. Seriously, I'm okay. I mean, I get what you're doing and all, but I'm okay. Then do it for me. Kyler shook his head and shrugged. Why for you? So I can see you happy for a few moments. Kyler looked at her, concerned, for a few moments. He didn't move. June looked at him, obviously embarrassed by how silly she must look with her arms spread out like that. To her surprise, he sighed and laid the side of his head upon her legs. He exhaled deeply, trying to get comfortable on the bench. This is kind of weird, he admitted. June gulped. 
Yeah, it is a bit, she agreed. She laid her hands down toward his head, but stopped. Can I stroke your hair? He turned to her briefly, but face forward. I guess you kind of have to if you're imitating her. June nodded and started to gently run her fingers along the locks of his hair. They were thick and a tad unclean, but she didn't mind. She pulled his long hair away from his eyes as he faced forward. How does it feel? Kyler shrugged. Okay, I guess. June puffed her cheeks nervously. She felt stupid doing this. Maybe this wasn't a good idea. Maybe she wasn't supposed to try to get him to remember his mother. How long did you play baseball? She asked, desperate to break the ice. It started after my mom passed away to try to get out of the house. Stopped when I was about 12, so for about seven years. Why did you stop? Was it not fun? Kyler shook his head, not swaying from June's gentle caress. It was. I got kicked off because of behavioral issues. June sighed. Why am I not surprised? Sheesh. Borderline cuddling me and you still can't be nice. Oh, hush. I could smack you in the side of the head if I wanted to, yet I'm not. Be thankful. Aren't you sweet? She rolled her eyes. Look at us. Even when we're having a moment, we still can't help but fight. She continued to gently pet the side of his face. His skin was a little rough, but again, she didn't mind. She realized Kyler wasn't perfect. Why would he be, considering all the obstacles he'd been forced to overcome? Did I ever tell you how I joined track? No. June nodded, still making sure to comfort her friend. When I was six, I had a lot of issues with bullies in my school. Every single day, they'd pick on me, call me names, slap me in the back of the head. I was little, so they couldn't do anything to st- I couldn't do anything to stop them. After school, every single day, basically, they chased me. They'd always catch me too. Every single day, they'd spit on me after pinning me to the ground. But every single day, they took longer and longer to catch me until one day. They didn't. I thought I was pretty fast. So after that, I started getting excited for gym class, knowing I could outrun people in my grade. Not once was I beaten any race of any kind since then. I just loved it. I had worked extra hard because of my size, too. I mean, we'd always play dodgeball or soccer or something like that. Games that basically had speed and agility be a background behind the main objective of the game, right? Well, I'd always be excited for that part. But when I was forced to actually play, God, did I dread it. I sucked at it, honestly, she said, laughing. I never got any better. To be honest, the fact that I caught the ball in baseball amazed me. So I decided to research if there was a way to run without doing anything else. Found out about track and decided to join up. Been a track nerd ever since. She smiled nostalgically as she continued pampering Kyler. Hmm. Kyler moaned in response. It didn't sound interested at all. June's smile faded. She didn't look down. She didn't want to see the bored, uncomfortable expression on Kyler's face. I'm sorry, she said softly. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I wanted you to experience what you did with your mom. And... All that time ago. It was selfish of me to ask this. I didn't mean to be so pushy or make you feel awkward. You can get up if you want, okay? Kyler didn't reply. She just raised, laid her hand on his head, not petting him anymore. Seriously, get up if you want. I won't be offended. I'm sorry. Kyler again did not move or reply. She blinked. Kyler? She looked down and gasped softly. He was asleep. June looked down at the sleeping face of Kyler Queen, and for the first time, he looked so peaceful. His expression wasn't hard or distasteful in any way. His eyebrows were relaxed. His lips were parted slightly, breathing slowly and peacefully. He even looked kind of cute, in a way. June smiled at him, almost blushing out of happiness. She continued to stroke his hair. Never mind. You can stay.
The bell rang, signaling the end of the school day. The collective student body of the classroom sighed in relief. Students had their feet in the hallway of chairs, ready to get up as soon as it rang, and they bolted out of the door. Noelle had to be home extra early since she was grounded a few days before. June took her time getting her bag in order, and Kyler waited impatiently for her to move, leaning on his hand. Hurry it up, he barked. You're slower than a turtle. A turtle that's dead. Slow and steady wins the race, she responded cheerfully. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't care what anyone tells me. That tortoise and hare story is a load of crap. If the dumbass rabbit didn't have ADHD and Tourette's, he would have won. Charming, she responded sarcastically. I'm ready. You? Been ready. Come on. June walked next to Kyler, her bag in front of her, kicking forward every time she hit it with her knee. Kyler walked with his bag slung over his back, his other hand in his pocket. June and Kyler were seldom apart seen apart anymore. It was almost strange to see one of them without the other. June was sure that uh, that was much to the chagrin of Kyler, but if he behaved, he would get rid of her faster. Kyler hadn't messed up that much lately. He was down to 17 days. Just over two more weeks of Kyler not being a brat and everything would be okay. Did you get the notes for math? June asked. Why? Kyler inquired. You need help? Good one. Because I saw you sleeping, so I figured you were going to pull that bogus excuse you tried a while back. Oh, that I hear stuff better in my sleep? Sleep, June thought. She remembered Kyler sleeping on her lap a few days prior. What a weird thought. She didn't believe it, even then, that he felt comfortable enough to pass out on her. Yeah, that. So, did you get him or not? Nope, Kyler answered honestly. It's fine, though. I'll just steal yours. June rolled her eyes. It's almost like I do the work for two people instead of one. What do you mean, almost? June groaned and turned the corner to the stairs, but stopped when she saw the sign-up sheets. She went over to them to search for track and field. She tapped it with her finger, picked up a pen, and quickly signed her name. She looked at any of the other activities to see if anything else interesting was available. She saw photography, anime club, book club, tutoring, baseball, cooking club, art. She paused. Baseball. She looked at the sign-up sheet and saw that the baseball tryouts would be ending for the day soon. It didn't make any sense for the tryouts to be starting before school ended, but she was sure it was because the teachers and coaches weren't allowed to stay after school unless practice or games were happening and tryouts didn't count. She looked out the window and to see this coach beginning to pick up supplies on the field. A lot of kids leaving en masse. Juniper? Kyler called, trying to see what stopped her. Let's go. Quit daydreaming. June didn't reply. She was too busy doing the math in her head to figure out if they could make it. Juniper! Kyler called once again, louder and sterner this time. Again, June didn't turn to face him. Kyler sighed and looked around the hall quickly, trying to make sure no one was around. June suddenly felt a pinch on her backside and squealed. She turned to face Kyler, her hands guarding her posterior. D did you just pinch my butt? You weren't paying attention. I said your name twice. What kind of reason is that? She shouted, her face red. You could have tapped me on the shoulder or something. Kyler shrugged. This works, so what's the big deal? Come on, let's go already. June blinked, then looked out the window briefly once more. Can we stop somewhere first? Kyler groaned. Where? June quickly grabbed his hand and started running. You'll see. Hurry. What? Hey, let go. 